If you're anything like me, and God help you if you are, you've made the mistake of assuming that simply cutting your grass on a regular basis, watering it, feeding it a couple times of the year is all it really takes to achieve that lush green lawn that we all strive for. Unfortunately, it just doesn't come that easy. So what we're doing today, dethatching and scarification process. It's actually a common misnomer. What most people think of thatch is actually just dead grass. A certain amount of thatch is necessary to maintain a healthy lawn, but over time that thatch layer becomes too thick for the nutrients, or if you're choosing to overseed, or simply water. It will block a lot of that moisture from getting down to the root layer of the grass in order to allow it to spread in an appropriate manner. So I've already taken care of step one, which is mowing the grass at the lowest level that the mower allows and bagging it all. If you kept your grass at the appropriate level through the summer, hot months, at around four inches for a tall fescue in this area, it's gonna take some time. Typically it's easiest to mow the grass first at one level lower, and then again at the next level lower, and then again in a final time at that lowest level setting. I'm on a quarter acre here, so not a tremendously large lawn, probably a little over 5,000 square feet of grass after you eliminate the footprint of the home, driveway, porches, decks, what have you. An example of what you'll be pulling up will look very similar to this, which is just a lot of dead grass that through the mulching process over the summer or for several seasons possibly will collect you won't really see it it'll be laying right there at that base layer of the grass where the grass meets the earth so after mowing and bagging down to the lowest level we then apply a power rake which will then pull more of that grass up that the mower can't do on its own we rake that all up and bag it as well just to put it in perspective of what that amount looks like after mowing, power raking, and then bagging all the clippings. As you can imagine, this is quite a tedious process, very time consuming. I'm on day three right now, which will be in the final step, which is replacing the rake with a scarifier blade, which is going to create grooves, which is gonna cut into the ground, removing that thatch layer that actually lays below those grass clippings, pulling that up to allow for us to overseed. My grass actually looked very similar to my neighbors here. Um, not as nice, but a lot of crab grass, which is still green, which before I started this process, I laid down a crab grass killer to really dry all that crab grass up so I can remove it, break it up. And you can see now, it's a very brown lawn. And this is exactly what it needs to look like. It's going to open up a lot of gaps that you couldn't see because the crabgrass actually grows out instead of up. So it provides you the illusion of having a full lawn without actually having it. So what we're trying to do is remove all that and get some grass seed growing and keep it watered regularly. So just to show you a little bit of what that scarification looks like, it's going to create these nice grooves. You can see I've already laid some seed. Um, and you can see a lot of this is crabgrass that has been pulled up. And what that's gonna allow is that grass seed to get right into the soil instead of just laying on the surface, which is something that you'll see over here. So once we run that scar fire in this area over here, it's really gonna allow this seed to get down into the soil in an appropriate manner. So. We'll start seeing some growth pretty soon here over the next week or so. So we'll get started on this, finish up, seed the lawn. Hopefully we're going to see some growth pretty quickly after this whole process is complete, especially since we have a uncommonly warm October that we're going into right now. Today is October 1st, so I'll post some pictures of the process as the days and weeks go on. And we'll check back soon. And if you enjoy the videos that you're seeing here on our channel, 
please click like and subscribe. Thanks again. Six lanes, tail lights, red ants marching into the night. They disappear to the left and right again. Another supper from a sack, a 99 cent heart attack. I got a pound in head and an aching back, and the camel's buried in a big All right, so the front portion of the yard is done. After obviously raking, ran over it again with the lawnmower. You don't really need to worry too much about the likelihood of picking up any of the seed that's in the soil because after the scarifying process, it's really helped embed. As you can see here, the seed now that was just normally laying on the surface is kind of in a perfect embedded state, which will help keep it moist and to help with the germination process. And as you can see over here, There's a few random seeds that might have been attached to the thatch that we pulled up, but generally there's really nothing in there, so you're not wasting seed. So now all we need to do now is get it watered, keep it watered, and then move on to the next section of the yard. A 99 cent heart attack. I got a pound in head and an aching back And the camel's buried in a big straw stack I'm gonna live where the green grass flows Watch my corn pop up in rows Every night be tucked in close to you Raise our kids where the good Lord's blessed Point our rocking chairs towards the west And plant our dreams where the peaceful river flows the green grass grows. Well, I'm from a map dot, a stop sign on a black top. I caught the first bus I could hop from there. But all of this glitter is getting dark. There's concrete growing in the city park I don't know who my neighbors are And there's bars on the corners and bars on my heart But I'm gonna live where the green grass grows Watch my corn pop up in rows Every night be tucked in close to you Raise our kids where the good Lord's blessed Point our rocking chairs towards the west Plant our dreams where the peaceful So here it is, a mountain of grass clippings and majority dead grass and thatch. So just to take a moment to nerd out for a moment, we had 25 bags filled tightly with a volume of 148 liters per bag. We'll subtract five bags from the total since those were filled with the clippings from the initial mowing of the yard, which gives us a total volume of 2,960 liters of impacted dead grass and thatch, which is equal to 2.96 cubic meters. Now one yard of material equals 0.76 cubic meters. So we had almost four yards of dead grass and thatch. 
since one yard of material equals covering a 100 square foot area three inches deep, which is also equal to covering 300 square feet of area one inch deep, we'll multiply that by four yards we collected, giving us enough material to cover a 1200 square foot area one inch deep. We'll use the handy dandy cross multiplication method to figure out what that equates to over a 6,800 square foot area, which gives us the value of X equal to 0.176 inches, more commonly associated with a 3 16th of an inch barrier, restricting water, fertilizer, seed, or insect killer that you may have spent good money on, which never even got to the part of the soil necessary to perform the job that it was intended. So now that the yard is perfectly prepped and seeded, as you can see, we have a great embedded base of the seed due to the scarifying process, in addition to a top layer of seed as well. Little to no dead grass or thatch that would impede the germination process from occurring as quickly as possible. Even though we have a nice mist going right now, we're gonna need a little bit more water than that. We're gonna go ahead and fire up our proprietary smart irrigation system which we'll go in a little bit more detail in a video coming down the road. But here's a little sneak peek. So utilizing an app on the phone, we'll just go ahead and get it started with quick 20 minute water. Hit play. And we'll count down. This system can be trenched, which mine will be as well, or having lines just run. What this system will actually allow for is for program slots, which you can choose. In this case, I've created a fall overseed program, which is running beginning with certain zones at 6 a.m the next zone starting 23 minutes later, and so on and so forth. This smart irrigation system is a fraction of the cost of your typical well and manifold system. The swing pipes that we use are much less intrusive than a hose or something of that sort. In fact, over time, um, the growth of the grass over a typical season will bury that line to the point where you don't even see it. Um, where your typical well and manifold system could run you anywhere from four to $7,000 on a typical quarter acre lot. We can typically do a three to four zone system for a standard quarter acre lot for less than a quarter of that price. And also gives you the ability to control and monitor that irrigation from home inside the house or from the other side of the world if you wanted to. Another neat feature of that system actually allows you to monitor the water consumption coming out from the hose bibs of the house. By calculating the flow rate, you'll be able to monitor and calculate what that water consumption is. It also has a nice feature called smart watering, which eliminates any of the guesswork or even having to program it. For this case, we're programming it uh, due to the overseeding process, we want to be watering it at least two to three times a day, uh, really regardless of the conditions, just to make sure that that seed has the appropriate opportunity to germinate. I'll be posting progress pics on the state of the yard on a weekly basis to show you. We should see some significant germination after about a um, week, week and a half, and should be fully filled out within the next two to three weeks. And as always, if you like this video and others, 